Well, I'm Dr. Valerie Schof. I'm a new assistant professor here at Glendon in the brand new bilingual biology program. I've come here via a bachelor's degree in biology from Queen's University, and then I was trained as a biological anthropologist at Tulane University in New Orleans, and most recently I've come from McGill University where I was doing a postdoctorate also in biological anthropology. So I'm a primate behavioral ecologist interested in how individuals navigate the complexities associated with life in social groups. So for example, how do individuals balance the need to compete with one another with the need to cooperate with one another? And I'm interested in how and why some males become alpha, whereas others seem to be destined to remain subordinate males for the rest of their lives. So recently I had an opportunity to talk about my research on white-faced capuchins, which are a species of monkeys that live in the Neotropics, so in Central and South America. It's interesting because um, males within groups are very tolerant of one another, they're highly affiliative, so they spend time grooming each other, they spend time resting in contact, and there's very little aggression among males within the groups. Additionally, all males participate in the mating system, which means that all males mate with group females. So when we look at genetics, we see that the genetics don't reflect the behavior. So even though all males are mating with the females, the alpha male is siring in some cases up to 100% of the group offspring. What we don't know is how are alpha males siring the majority of these offsprings, because as I've noted, alpha males are not especially aggressive towards subordinate males. Perhaps alpha males are mating with females when the females are ovulating, so when they're likely to conceive, whereas subordinate males mate with females when they're not ovulating, kind of making the best of a bad situation that maybe something will work out. So the first uh, challenge with uh, evaluating that hypothesis is that females have concealed ovulation. So like human females, they don't have any obvious external physical signs or behavioral signs of ovulation. It's not that there are no signs at all, but just that these are so subtle that as an observer, I can't tell that a particular female is ovulating. That doesn't mean that the capuchin males can't tell. So, one way to tell when a female is ovulating is to collect fecal samples. So we can look at progesterone and estradiol levels to tell when a female is ovulating. And then to tell if males can detect female ovulation, um, one of the ways that we can examine that is through looking at male hormone levels, again from fecal samples. So I spent a lot of time collecting monkey poo. We see that there are differences between alpha males and subordinate males, but what we don't know is, is there something special about males who do eventually become alpha? So in my future research, I'm actually going to be moving over to a different study species, vervets in East Africa and Uganda. And my goal there is really to follow individual males from birth through adulthood and beyond to try and see if there are differences between males who do eventually become alpha and those who remain subordinates.